Hi everybody, welcome back to another technical demo around the Quarkus application. In this demo, I'm going to showcase how to make distributed tracing integration with open telemetry and for serverless application based on KNAB and Quarkus. So first of all, uh, before we get starting with the demo, let me try to talk a little bit about why we need open telemetry and how that matters. In the cloud level architecture, you got a bunch of application to deploy in Kubernetes or hybrid cloud, which uh, makes sometimes a broad operational challenge, for example, how to solve availability and performance issue real quick. In order to solve those challenges, telemetry is a key role for the providing observability. Traditionally, telemetry data has been provided a lot of open source projects, but also commercial vendors. This is cause another standard issue. Telemetry enables to have a single and vendor agnostic solution, and this project also broad industry support and adoption for cloud provider, vendors, and users. And then you can also, in the end, for Java developer, Quarkus also integrate this capability open telemetry with one of the extension for your cloud and application deployment. And then moving forward to serverless architecture with event-driven application programming, it is one of the common popular project to make your existing microservice application as serverless. With that, this video teaches how to trace your distributed microservice application, specifically serverless application with the Java framework. Let's get right into the demo, how it works. Okay, this is my uh, sample application based on Quarkus. I, I'm gonna use the Quarkus Race version. And here's the thing, the Quarkus uh, actually provide Open Telemetry Explorer extension. Just edit it, you can add using Maven command line or Quarkus CLI, or you can just uh, select and download G5 from code.quarkus.io webpage. And then we're gonna add the Quarkus OpenShift extension as well. In the end, we're going to deploy this application to OpenShift cluster for KNAB service for serverless application. The sample application just a greeting resource Java file to handle uh, RESTful API. As you can see, there are a simple application hello and then just print our log file and as well as return text in. hello from less easy reactive. And one of the beauty of the Quarkus, you can actually use a reactive programming by default based on less easy reactive. Right, I'm going to add a few more RESTful API uh, in this example uh, to trace this uh, application invocation from RESTful API. So I'm going to add a new pass Ola and return Ola Daniel, my name, and the same return text and the logo printout same. So let's try to add one more RESTful API here. Let's say the new pass is a greeting, and then uh, the method name is same thing is greeting. Oh, here's maybe typo, but uh, just I'm going to greeting and then here to return the hello, Quarkus Open Telemetry, and a welcome Quarkus and Open Telemetry, which is the same text result. So here's the application property, uh, how to define the Open Telemetry for tracing. So as you can see, uh, the application name, I'm going to say my service, and then I'm going to enable Open Telemetry feature, and also here the Explorer endpoint. So here's the thing, Open Telemetry gathers all metric data from your source, for example, Quarkus application or even IoT Edge device, and then it will send it back to the tracing server, for example, Jaeger. We're going to use Jaeger in this example in local environment as well. So here is localhost 4317 uh, Open Telemetry controller. We're going to run Open Telemetry server as a Docker container locally in a minute. So here's the Docker Compose file, how to a stand up Jaeger server and uh, collect based on open telemetry. As you can see, here's Docker Compose have the two, two container uh, specification. First container Jaeger tracing with the export ports here. And another one is open telemetry, and then it also exports a few ports here. And one of the GPC receiver and the 4317 port we just specified in the Quarkus application. You can also mount open telemetry collector configuration, which we can specify receiver and a process, explorer, and so on. So let's take a look at the how to define open telemetry collector configuration here. So you can see uh, we're going to use a receiver by default OATP protocol for gRPC. And the other one is HTTP protocol, something like that. It's a similar concept, HTTP for OATP2 protocol. And the last thing uh, we're gonna uh, 
specify the services based on receiver, processor, explorer, and so on. You can actually specify the receiver and extension and the services and explorer uh, based on your uh, backend aggregation server and tracing server. You can actually use a Zipkin server for the receiver, for example. Okay, so here's my local terminal window. Let's try to uh, run Docker Compose first to uh, start Jaeger server and open telemetry controller. So I'm going to use the Docker Compose command line and it will take some time uh, to run up just like that. And you can see uh, Jaeger server and then open telemetry controller just, run, just to make sure uh, it's running. And then Docker PS showcase the open telemetry controller as well as uh, Jaeger server uh, running up on my local. Next thing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to access the Jaeger web console uh, for my local. When you go to Jaeger UI, there's a no service at this moment. When you try to load it, it instantly shows the one service which is just a Jaeger query by default. Now I'm going to run my Quarkus application using Quarkus CLI. You can also use a Maven. I will grad uh, as long as you're going to deploy in grad application. Okay, so Quarkus demo is running. The press W from the Quarkus runtime terminal, it automatically open landing page as you can see and visit the dev UI just for fun. And then when you go to uh, one of the extension here, open telemetry, still experimental feature, but it's worth uh, showcasing this demo at this moment. And click on configuration in uh, one of the open telemetry extension, you can find all key and value. Uh, you can specify your application side to define open telemetry controller, which is really good. And then uh, I'm going to reload my Jaeger console UI, and you can see my application, which has defined my application property file. My service is automatically start up. So this application and my service, and then you can operation all, and then there's no operation or when you define in my RESTful API. So let's go back to terminal window and then try to access our RESTful API. And then uh, switch another terminal window and then try to HTTP PI tool and access the hello. And it will return REST is reactive. And then go back to Yego UI and press Yego UI and then go to operation. You can see new uh, RESTful API automatically detected, which means that behind the scene, open telemetry automatically uh, detect the new trace telemetry data from the application. And then you already sent to a uh, tracing server, which is a Jaeger automatically it's happening. So when you a uh, little bit looking into my service and then you can find uh, open telemetry actually uh, aggregate this telemetry data from my application. So let me try to call on the RESTful API and go back to Jaeger UI what happened in the next. And uh, I'm gonna try to ask the new RESTful API, Ola and greeting. And you can see all uh, Daniel and welcome uh, my text window. And then when you reload the Yego UI, you can find another two RESTful API operation here. And then the same one trace and one trace because I just invoked one time. Let me try to call one more time for the Ola application. And then you can see back to the Yego UI and reload the Yego UI. You can find immediately uh, another trace just gathering into uh, Yeager spaces, which is really cool. So now I'm going to try to deploy this application to Kubernetes, which is I'm going to use OpenShift cluster for 10. And here is a, I already created namespace, which is a project in OpenShift. As you can see, Quark stage open telemetry. And then one of the good things of uh, OpenShift cluster, it allows you to install open telemetry controller using operator. I already installed operator and also I already installed History tracing prepo, which already include the Jaeger server. Okay, I already installed Open Telemetry Operator. That's why you can see the one part is showing up. When you go with the admin perspective and install operator, there are a bunch of the operator, but you just need to focus on here the history tracing prepo, which allows me to install and create a Jaeger server. And then the other one is OpenShift to distributed tracing data collection. So in order to uh, deploy KNM services, and we need to actually install KNM survey uh, module in as part of OpenShift serverless operator. 
So one thing I needed to add the configuration here, I need to try to use a Zipkin server. In order to do that, I'm going to try to trace in Zipkin server, which automatically detect uh, the tracing data when your new uh, KNB service is created. Okay, looks good. And I'm going to just uh, from my Zipkin server, which I'm going to create it in the end for open telemetry. So go to KNB serving namespace. And then create a KNB survey. And then just paste the dead demo file. And if you go back to the developer console, you will see the bunch of the part will uh, starting. So as you can see, there are a bunch of the part uh, started. Uh, one of them is the own KNB or the scalar part, and the webhook, and the HPA, and so on. Okay, go back to our demo project. Then I'm going to try to create a Jaeger server. And I'm going to just do the all default configuration, which is a uh, really comfortable Java developer. And it will get started in a minute. Now let's try to add a new open telemetry uh, collector as well. So here is the uh, open telemetry collector, a little bit different thing uh, between uh, Kubernetes version versus the local one. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to try to use Zipkin server uh, for the receiver. So that's why I put in the receiver as a Zipkin. And then Jaeger, which is the same thing, but only different thing is here. Uh, I'm going to set it up the right service name rather than just local host. And then in the local host, you can actually uh, skip the TLS termination, even which is not insecure for the demo environment and local, uh, which is uh, good enough for moving forward. But in production, I strongly recommend you have to set it up. TLS termination for secure your application. That's why I put in the TLS option. In the previous three, I set it up insecure, but in production environment, I'm going to set it up TLS as we did uh, the certificates file here. And then I go back to uh, OpenShift Developer Console and then create the Open Telemetry Collector and then create that. Click on create button and then paste all YAML file in this YAML view. And uh, everything is looking good. Here is once again uh, the right service name with the namespace and the receiver zip key and export Jaeger. And then once you create the button, and then it will uh, start in a second. Okay, looks good. So when you click on uh, the cluster collector, for open telemetry, you can see the, the right rows on inside the pod. And now I'm going to add a few more configuration here to deploy this application into OpenShift cluster as a KNB services. So first of all, I'm going to specify a container image group, which is the same name of my project name or this name. And I'm going to push this containerized image to integrate OpenShift container S3, and then the deploy through which, which means when you Packaging this application using Quarka CLI or Maven Camera, it will automatically deploy to a remote Kubernetes cluster, and which is your Kubernetes is a native. So there are three options for developer. You can define the target for deployment. One is K native, and for just normal application part based on Kubernetes and OpenShift. And I'm gonna uh, make it uh, available louder uh, to access the endpoint by external user, and I'm going to use the uh, separate subject for X that uh, HTTPS protocol. Okay, so I'm going to start my uh, demo, and then I'm going to deploy this application, including building. Using Quarkus build, I'm going to skip the test, and it takes a minute uh, to packaging the application. In the meantime, let's try to access the Jaeger server from my production environment from Open. When you click on the Open URL, it automatically Integrate a single sign-on from OpenShift user account, so which is really awesome. And when you go to Diego UI, you can see there's a no service at the very beginning, just like a you saw in the environment. Then when you load this Diego UI, it will automatically show the default one service Diego query, just like the uh, same thing in the local environment. Okay, let's give us a moment and back to the terminal window. Behind the scene, it actually packaging uh, faster like a Java. Java application artifact, and, they, and after that, uh, it will package the application uh, using OpenShift S2I processor. You can actually use Docker build storage as well. 
And in the end, it will push this containerized image into integrated OpenShift uh, container registry. You can also push it into external container you need. And then in the end, uh, OpenShift worker node pulls that image into available worker node. It's happening well, with just one single worker CLI command line, which is really good. And go back to uh, OpenShift topology view, you can see the new uh, application just started. And then this is a Quarkus application. Let's try to make uh, this hot icon with the Quarkus. So first of all, you can change the icon K native services to a function, which is a more explicit showcase than serverless application. And then you can uh, add application runtime uh, label to showcase this application is based on Quarkus. Fancy way uh, to do that. And then when you go to Quarkus runtime logs, you can find uh, the Quarkus application running on JVM as a job file, and here's the Quarkus race version. And then here's the open telemetry extension and REST React for React with programming, which is really good for support application. Okay, uh, just take a look at that. This is a pod name. So when you go back to uh, Jaeger UI and uh, just refresh, and it automatically detects. Back, a new service is just like a pod name. So the reason why you can see two different pods because when you change the revision name, it automatically restart another container. So that's why you can see two pod name here, which means the open telemetry automatically uh, gather that telemetry data from KNM service when KNM service is a startup. And which is really good, so you don't need to set it up some specific uh, code in the application side to trace all telemetry. It's already down path. So as you, when you go back to here, and then you can see uh, the application part and serverless application automatically scale down to zero, just like a default serverless behavior. I'm going to copy route URL and then Go back to uh, terminal and uh, try to access endpoint uh, for invoke the RESTful API and uh, just uh, make sure the relevant trace uh, detected by open telemetry and send it to Jaeger server. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to try to access hello and then you can see the Quarkus application automatically starts just like a core start uh, strategy on the serverless technology. And then and try to access another desktop API like a Ola and then uh, Kaburi. And the, the return result is exactly the same value we can see in my local. Now go back to Yego UI and then reload that thing and then open operation. And you can see uh, three different operations you can see. And then click on Yeg hello and you can see one trace because we just called one time. And then here's the detail tracing data and telemetry data and then uh, go to Ola is one thing. So let's try to call oh, one more time Ola RESTful API and go back to Jaeger and then find that you got a two trace. It's Im immediately you can uh, aggregate the data from open telemetry and back to the Jaeger server. And one time and then you got a three trace here. So let's go to greeting and then you can see the, and then call one more time greeting. And then just by trace, you have a two trace, which is really uh, happening simultaneously almost. When you click on grouping RESTful services, you can find the more detailed tracing telemetry data, which is already came from multiple deployment because you can never service keep up and down based on on-demand traffic. You can find the more trace load into open telemetry collector pod. When you go back to develop console and then click on cluster collector, uh, in the view logs, you can find a bunch of the logs aggregating from the open telemetry collector. Thanks for watching. Have a good rest of the day.